Meantime, Browns have filled out their defense, although they they bring in three on the defensive line, but they lose three on the defensive line. So somewhere they've got to come up with more bodies, I would think. I don't think they're done uh, on that point. But they did sign Juan Thornhill, who will fill the void left by JJ3. And three years, 21 million, 14 of it's guaranteed. The, the question I think here is, is this an upgrade from JJ3? I think it is. I think it is. I mean, you know, I'm not watching him play all the time like we are John Johnson. I thought John Johnson played poorly here for the most part when he was here for two years. And the PFF grades uh, point that out as well. It back up what my <laughs> eyes tell me. With Thornhill, I said, okay, what are the PFF grades? Because I'm not watching him every time. His, it was lower than I expected it to be. But it was better than John Johnson. It was, He's, but that's not saying much. Well, but you're paying him half of what you were paying that's Johnson. That's the key. That's the key. Right? And was, I, I thought they were going to shop even cheaper at safety. I thought they'd go three, four million. They went seven million. But I think he's a he's a solid player. He's not special. He's not. Right. He's a fine player. He's an upgrade, and you're paying him less. So I think it's a good move. Yeah, yeah he had a great rookie year. Tore his yeah. ACL. Took a while to get back from that. Yeah. Had a decent year last year. I think matched his career high in tackles and interceptions last year. But it's it's the money for me that what I mean. JJ three was not earning what he was getting. So and you know we've talked about on the show. It didn't make any sense to me to go spend 14, 15 million no. on another safety. No. Seven million, okay, fine. I'm kind of with you. I would, I wouldn't have cared if they drafted a guy in the third right. round and put him back there, or get one for three or four million. Seven million, four million, okay, whatever. I don't know if it's necessarily an upgrade. It's not a downgrade, and you just cut, you know, five million off the right. off what you're paying. And that's, I think that's the end game here. Yeah. Was they saved some money? What do you think? Upgrade. Kind yeah. of a wash? No, no, no. I, I think it's an upgrade. Um, John Johnson, to me, I, he just, he never even played like a, a safety. Like, he was just, like, he had a corners mentality. Like, he would make business decisions coming up on tackles. He would stop in the middle of plays. And, and I'm like, nah, that ain't it. What I like best is the fact that he comes from somewhere that he is, is used to winning football games. Like, there's a lot of people who come here and, and – they're not used to winning. Although John Johnson came from a winning program. Right. He came yeah. from a winning program. Troy yeah. Hill did too. Yeah. Um, and I, neither guy, by the way, looked anything close to the guy they nothing. were in, in, in Completely uh, different. Although, although the Rams didn't win their Super Bowl until after those guys left. Right. I know, but I, I think everybody here will agree that we were duped on the Hill-Johnson 100%. 100%. Combo. 100%. Yeah. Uh, I think Thornhill makes some plays. Um, you know, he's not, he's not going to be anybody that's like a – Ed Reed playmaker safety like none of that, but I think that what he'll do is he'll be solid. Um, he'll work in Schwartz's defense and I think it'll be a different type of defense anyway. Like I just didn't agree with the philosophy of Joe Woods. I think Schwartz will look a lot better. Um, the defense will look a lot better under him and to me like Jason said, I didn't, I've never thought free safety was some magic like some monster position that yeah. the, the Browns need to have. Um, in, in order to, to, you know, upgrade their roster. I think this is yeah. a fine move, and I think they'll rotate a young guy in there, too. I don't know if John would – we'll never know the answer if, if John would have been better in a Schwartz defense than what he was, but I think John was one of those guys last year who was looking around like, what, what are we doing? Like, yeah. he was one of those guys that I think he was – He even came out and said some of that. Yeah, I think he was one of those guys that was sort of infected by <laughs> Brown's culture, yeah. if that makes right. sense, mm. and like – Oh my God! What is going on here? What are we doing? Yeah, and and I think he got really frustrated with some of that. My take on that is pretty much echoing what you just said. So when I'm looking at the three for three swap on the front line, I, I think I, I think it's an upgrade for sure. It can't be a downgrade. It can't well, be. We gotta now, get, if you had gone, let's if, save that. Let's save the D line. No, Mike wants I know. Us to save the D line. I know, but what I'm <laughs> I, I, the reason my point from yeah. Thornhill takes me around to your point is because, and it comes back to your point as well. I am now firmly entrenched in the mindset, and I hate to say this, but I think that Joe Woods was 80% of the problem. I really do. Because we saw a guy in Hill who was clearly a guy that jumps off the tape at you. He came into this defense and looked pedestrian. He went back and looked a lot closer to the guy that he was before he came to Cleveland. In JJ3... I think it's the same thing. And I think your point's exactly right. He was looking around going, what kind of defense are we running here? 
Like this, this not only does this not play to our strengths, we're we're exposing ourselves to massive gashes in the run game. Yeah. And I I honestly believe that the biggest move at the end of the next year, I think we'll I, I we'll revisit this, but I think the biggest move the Browns made so far, notwithstanding what they're going to do, was bringing in Jim Schwartz. I have a firm belief that Woods was the problem top to bottom. Nothing I, I, looked right. Yeah. Nothing. I, I, I don't know that I, I agree of 85%. I definitely think he was a big culprit. You know, I think there's, you know, you look at other guys in the secondary who's played. Grant Delpit's play has gotten better, right? So he's, but, but Grant he, I thought he had his moments, best though. year. Yeah. I thought he had his best year. But he's had some moments too. Oh, yes, Denzel yes. Ward. What in the world has happened to Denzel Ward? Uh, but even Denzel, I thought, played better in the second half of the year. And which which was two years in a row, Bull. They, they looked that's like true. garbage the first that's eight true. weeks, both years. I just always hate to put too much on coaching because I feel like it gives the players a pass. And I'm hesitant but, to but do I that. But I certainly agree with you that the Jim Schwartz move was the biggest move on defense. And here's the thing what the Browns have done on defense, and specifically in the secondary. Like, they have a good secondary. There's a lot of talent there. I like there. it. They didn't need to add a superstar. Right. I believe Thornhill. Now, think about it. As good as the Chiefs are, the Browns have a way better secondary than the Chiefs do. And so Thornhill is going to play with much better players on the Browns. And I think that, you know, like, even if you're on a good team, I think if you're playing with weak guys around you, sometimes you try to do too much. That's true. And and especially because, as you talked about, he was coming back from an injury. He did he did get better last year. I think he's ascending, and I think Delpit's ascending. I think the Browns secondary. Now, I thought the Browns secondary was going to be a strength last year, right. and I was wrong. But once again, with, I agree with you, much better coaching on defense, I think the secondary should be a big-time strength on this team. I agree. I, look, I agree with the 85% with Joe Woods. All it's right. just, it, when you watch them play, when you would go watch, and you would, you would sit there and you would look at the way he would play on third down, it was, it was, it was just baffling to me. I, I just did not understand why you would not already know you don't have pass rushers but bring no sort of pressure with quarterbacks that are going to sit back there and destroy you. So it, it, there was times when, and, and this, this has happened to me, I've played for coaches who I know have no clue. Do you know how, you know how embarrassing and, and frustrating it is to play with Sean's dad? And Sean's dad is the guy who don't know nothing about TV. And, and, and he's the, actually he's the same guy that Bull talked about in the beginning of the show. Yeah, the guy has never played sports. Yeah, he's your third base coach and he's talking about hit the cutoff man. You're like, yeah. bro, I'm gonna need you to stop throwing terms out there like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's telling grown. He's telling grown men to chatter. Yeah. Hey guys, chatter it up out there. You know, we don't do that no more. Yeah. What, what Spe- the hell are you doing? Speaking Sean? of which G Bush, let me tell you something. <laughs> let, let me sidebar on because it reminded me last night. Oh, good. Last night we had our little league managers meeting. Wow. <laughs> okay. It's that time, yeah. All little right. Meetings. This meeting took almost three hours. Oh my That's god. Absurd. Now I will admit that I was one of the culprits that extended it. Oh, of course. But you were. but you can't ever keep your mouth. But closed. but, but that's, true. I, I, that's true. That's uh, true. However, <laughs> I at least made quick points. The guy who a couple of I'm like I shouldn't name names because they probably watch. It. Yeah, don't name. But names. one of the guys there, he took 25. I mean, Everybody's going to know who it is, but he took like 30 minutes to talk about uniforms. Like, we don't need a 30 minute conversation no, on uniforms. No, that can be settled in three he seconds. Knows he's that guy now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you he's imagine? a great guy. He's, the, he's a, you know, everybody there is great. We had fun, and I, it was some of it was schmoozing, but, uh, yeah, but, but it was fun. I gouged my eyes out, right? I'm not showing up to that. I love I it. Wouldn't even, I wouldn't even answer. If you think I don't answer texts from this chat, yeah. the text from that one? No, I never. I don't have that. Time. I like it though. For I love. Record, I love being a big part of the little league. Speaking of G answering text, yeah. G just sent us like a minute ago his five starters and three relievers. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hey, like, I you didn't know what? Know it was the by the way, was... shout out to Anthony for being a savant for being able to put this together. That, like I was like, hold on. Dude, by the way, folks. By the way, folks. If you live or your kid goes to school in Rocky River, tomorrow is the last day. To register for Rocky River Little League. All right. Are you in. On, are you on a parent teacher uh, UPTA too? Like I'm a vo- I I take pride in being a coach in the league, and I take pride in the league, no, and listen, I want it to be good. And there you go. Uh, all hats off to you. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, it's become a bit of a problem over the last ten to twenty years. Yeah. Getting volunteers. Oh, to, yeah. To coach kids 
is really, really I love challenging. It. I, I don't love know that they've ever had more difficulty finding coaches. Seeing to do a it. kid improve, yep. you, you know, obviously I want my own yeah. kid to improve. Yeah. But it, when I see these kids get better as the season goes along, it just it gives me it's such a so fun. And there's a light that goes off in all yeah. phases, whether it's defense, running the bases at Absolutely. the plate, and that is rewarding. When and, you see a kid yeah. start to understand why pitch selection is so important. Yeah. And then you see him become it's a better awesome. hitter because of that. It's great. And teaching him to be a good teammate and a, right. and a, and a good winner. You know, How do you and, like your team this year? Have you drafted yet? Not yet. We're, yeah. uh, we're doing – last year, the, the board members picked the teams, which was Ooh. a disaster. Was that like a COVID thing because they didn't – Well, that's what they had done during COVID, so they stuck yeah. with it. Now, it's not really – we're, we're, how we're doing it is we're drafting the teams, and then once the teams are picked – then we pick a number out of a hat to see which team is your team. That is really smart. This way we make them even. And there's yeah. no risk of somebody's loading up a team. Right. And then your kid, if he's not on your team, you trade for an equal sure. talent. I've 